Now if you haven't already done it, now is the time to absolutely make sure that your lens cover is removed. Ok, now we take the circuit board, tilt it in from this side because the uh, wires here are quite short. So you've got three to connect, you've got an edge connector here and two plugs here. And this one which goes here to the centre. So you do, do the ones on the edges first and of course, it, yeah, not, forget, not forgetting that one. But you could do that one last. So I'm going to connect the edge connector because that's longer than the uh, green plugs. Green plugs are actually quite tight, so you, you have to get the board quite down into position before you can locate them. That's one in. Two in, that's two green plugs in. locate this in the right place, getting the plugs through the back of the unit, here, and pass the edge connector under the mains lead and plug that into the, the main board in the middle, well, not main board but the, the uh, power board in the middle, okay, making sure our screw holes line up not forgetting that we have two screws at the back where these, these plugs are. So we'll, we'll locate all the screws first before we tighten anything up. So now we will put this this plug in the front while the board still has some manoeuvrability. We can reach underneath it. Okay, that's all the plugs. Now we go for the uh, these small screws here. As you can see, these are the ones for the board, for the top of the board. Put them in loosely, don't do them up all the way, just to make sure that you can locate the board nicely. When you know you no longer have to move the board around, then you can tighten them up. Always good practice. And the final one has to pass through this little, this little other thing. Well, it's not even an earthing strap, it's a, just a clip holding the wires in place, so the final screw passes through that little ring there, and tighten the back ones first because this draws the board towards the back. Now we go for the circuit board screws. Remembering there are four of those. Okay, they're all tight. Now we can spin this round and put the casing on. Zoom out a little bit there. So the, um, the the top and back screws are distinctly smaller. 
and they're identifiable from the top ones because I think you can probably see that there. Anyway, you, you'll see them when you take them out. Again, just loosely locate these screws. Um, don't tighten any one up until they're all located. One at the top, one at the back. And four at the sides. The procedure is similar on other Denons, by the way, on the um, 2100, the 2600, but it's, it is a slightly different laser unit you need to get. So ignore the my part numbers because part numbers are different. It's a slightly different procedure in terms of the wires inside, but basically it's the same operation. Um, it's no, no easier and no more difficult than this one. just the connections to the lazy unit on those are slightly different. Okay, so you push the case as far as it will go to the front because you don't want it rattling about if you're taking these out in transit. I don't know if you do or not. But you don't want them rattling about. So home load case all screws, we can do them up tightly. And there you go, that's the laser replaced and hopefully saved you a couple of hundred pounds. So we connect the head unit. And plug it in. As I say, you do this, you do this repair at your own risk. Um, I won't be responsible if anything happens to your machine. Power it up. Okay, transit looks good. Don't, don't forget to put the lip back on the front, locate it on the edges and push down gently while holding the tray from underneath and it clips in. So we'll take our CD and pop it in. Voila, no more disc error. One successful laser change.